Corona spaces rise to 75 in country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges South Asian nations to fight disease together. Former JNK Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah finally freed after being under house arrest since September last year. Sure, Kalita and opposition nominee Ajit Kumar Bhuya filed nominations in Assam for forthcoming Rajya Sabha polls. Meghalaya Democratic Alliance candidate W.R. Karluki offers files nomination papers for lone Rajya Sabha seat in the state. And in sports, PV Sindhu reaches quarter final of All England Championship in Birmingham. Other Indians bow out of the tournament. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Northeast News Bulletin. This is Monjui. Now with the details. In national news, first, Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare Ashwini Kumar Chaube today informed the Lok Sabha that altogether 1,18,322 confirmed cases and 4,292 deaths have been reported from 113 countries due to the novel coronavirus COVID-19, according to a World Health Organization report dated on March 11. In a written reply, the minister said that as on 12 March 2020, altogether 75 positive cases have been reported in India. Of these three cases of Indian nationals were reported in Kerala, who have since recovered and have been discharged from the hospital. He said the World Health Organization has declared novel coronavirus COVID-19 a pandemic on the 11th of this month. Government has taken note of the outbreak of COVID-19 in China and has initiated various steps to monitor the situation in all states and union territories of the country, including Kerala. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed the desire that the leadership of SARC nations should uh, chalk out a strong strategy to fight coronavirus. Modi said that to keep all citizens healthy, there should be a discussion through video conferencing. In a series of tweets, Modi said, together example can be set to the world and contribute to a healthier planet. He said the planet is battling the COVID-19 novel coronavirus and at various levels, governments and people are trying their best to combat it. South Asia, which is home to a significant number of the global population, should leave no stone unturned to ensure that Indian people are healthy. In more national news, the Jammu and Kashmir administration has revoked the detention order of the former chief minister and national conference leader Dr. Farooq Abdullah with immediate effect. Principal Secretary Shalin Kabra issued the order revoking Dr. Abdullah's detention. Dr. Abdullah has been under house arrest since the 15th of September last year following the abrogation of Article 370. He was put under preventive detention at his home on Gupka Road in Srinagar. Last week, the opposition had demanded immediate release of the former chief minister. Meanwhile, the National Conference has welcomed the order, saying it will be a right step for the restoration of a genuine political process in the state. In Meghalaya, the budget session of the State Legislative Assembly commenced today with the address of Governor Tathagata Roy. Chief Minister Konrad K. Sangma will present the budget for the year 2020-2021 on March 18. In more news from Meghalaya, Chief Minister Konrad K. Sangma has asserted that his government has effectively controlled law and order during the recent violence in the state. Chairing an all-party meeting attended by representatives of the ruling Meghalaya Democratic Alliance, Opposition Congress and Independent MLS, Sangma said the state government was able to control the situation within a few days since the eruption of violence. Violence had erupted in Shillong and its outskirts since February 28 
following the death of a Kasi Students Union member during an anti-car rally at Ichamati Thad also demanded implementation of the inner line permit in the state. Sangma told reporters that measures like internet ban in six districts of the Kasi and Jantia Hills and curfew in the state capital were taken to maintain law and order. In Assam, noted journalist Ajit Kumar Bhuya today filed his nomination papers for the Rajya Sabha election as a common candidate of the Opposition Congress and AIUDF. Former Chief Minister Torun Gugu, former Minister Rukibul Hussain and other Congress and AIDUF leaders were with him while filing nominations. BJP nominee Bhubaneshwar Kalita also filed his nominations today for the Rajya Sabha polls. Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonwal, Finance Minister Dr. Himanta Bishwar Sharma and Agriculture Minister Atul Bora accompanied him at the time of filing his papers. On the other hand, MDA common candidate for the lone Rajya Sabha seat in Meghalaya, W.R. Karluki, filed his nomination papers on Thursday. Accompanied by members of the MDA coalition and Deputy Chief Minister Preston Tinsong Karluki, who is also the NPP state president, filed nominations at the old assembly building. Both Karluki and Tinsong later expressed their confidence of winning the seat. The Union Cabinet has approved a 4% hike in dearness allowance for 48 lakh central government employees and dearness relief to 65 lakh pensioners. It will be effective from 1st of January this year. With this, the dearness allowance has gone up from 70% to 21%. Briefing the media after the Cabinet meeting, Union Minister Prakash Javedkar said the government will incur 14 lakh 595 crore rupees additional expense due to the DA hike. The cabinet also approved a hike in minimum support price of COPRA for 2020 season. In Tripura, Governor Ramesh Bais today chaired a review meeting at Conference Hall of DM and Collector Office of South District, Agartala. The Governor said law and order, education and health departments will be the main pillars of development in the state. The main crop of the state is paddy and it is important to increase new varieties of paddy and other crops. It is very important to increase the production of local fruits and vegetables to commercialize them on a wide basis, he added. तो मैं गवर्नर होने के बाद पहली बार बेलोनिया है डिस्ट्रिक्ट में आया क्योंकि प्रदेश का हेड होने के कारण मैं त्रिपुरा को the center has notified the protection of children from sexual offenses rules 2020 which enables implementation of recent amendments to the act under which provisions of punishment for child abuse have been made more stringent some of the significant additions in the new rules include provision of mandatory police verification of staff in schools and care homes procedures to report sexual abuse material pornography importing age appropriate child rights education among others. Under the rules, the state governments have been asked to formulate a child protection policy based on the principle of zero tolerance to violence against children, which shall be adopted by all institutions, organizations or any other agency working with or coming in contact with children. In Assam, a team of the Guwahati Municipal Corporation, led by its collector Pallavi Kachari, today launched an eviction drive against shops and other business establishments from Jalukbari to Adabari. Illegally set up in municipal areas, the team also directed others who have been failed to renew their licenses to properly update them. The team also inspected hotels and restaurants in the area to see if they are maintaining the required cleanliness. In sports news, in badminton, P.V. Sindhu entered the quarter-finals of the 2020 All England Championship in the women's singles in Birmingham. She defeated Sung Hee 
Hyun of South Korea in a straight game 21-19, 21-15 on Thursday. Sindhu will next meet fourth seed Nojomi Okuhara of Japan today. She is now the lone Indian representative at the championship. Earlier in men's single, Lakshya Sen bowed out of the tournament after suffering a 21-17, 21-18 defeat at the hands of Denmark's Victor Axel Sen in second round. In women's doubles, Indian pair of Ashwini Pona and Ansiki Reddy also made an exit after being defeated by the Japanese duo of Mitaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi. In Nagaland, Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patan, along with advisor Prison Printing and Stationery H. Haying, today visited Noklag village and declared it a model village. In his speech, the Deputy Chief Minister said Noklag is the second in the state to be recognized as a model village. He said there will be two new police stations at Noku and ITC Den. In Meghalaya, a one-day seminar was held on Thursday on gender equality and domestic violence organized by the Women's Cell Committee and Seminar Committee at Kiang Nangba Government College, Joai. The seminar was organized by the Rashtriya Ushtar Siksha Abhyan Rusa. DSP Crime Bands C. Lindo was the chief guest. Two resource persons who presented papers on the subject were Balarisha Lindo and Annie Sotan. Before we wind up the bulletin, a recap of the headlines. Novel Corona cases rise to 75 in country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges South Asian nations to fight disease together. Former JNK Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah finally freed after being under house arrest since September last year. BJP nominee Bhubaneshwar Kalita and opposition nominee Ajit Kumar Bhuya filed nominations in Assam for forthcoming Rajya Sabha polls. Meghala Democratic Alliance candidate W.R. Karluki offers files nomination papers for lone Rajya Sabha seat in the state. Both PV Sindhu reaches quarter-final of All England Championship in Birmingham. Other Indians bow out of the tournament. That brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.